Progressivism is a societal cancer. Oh, hi there. Welcome to the Freedom Alternative. I think most of you have already heard that in Sweden a man named Jan Schinnesson, formerly editor-in-chief of Samtiden, the newspaper of the semi-right-wing party Sverige Demokraterna, or Sweden Democrats, is organizing an event called Pride Java that is due to take place this Wednesday, July the 29th. The event is essentially a gay pride parade. What makes it special is that it will go through Muslim-dominated areas, namely through the Stockholm districts of Tensta and Husby, where roughly three-quarters of the population preys on a carpet, believes in the teachings of Mohammed, and tends to take a dim view of gay pride events in general. In fact, to say that they take a dim view of such events is a bit of an understatement, if we are to judge by recent history. In neighboring Denmark, gay pride parades have had to learn the hard way not to tread within Islamic strongholds by getting stones thrown in their heads. And this didn't happen once, but multiple times, until they stopped going through the Nuremberg area in Schöbenhaven. Mind you, Nuremberg area is an area with 30 to 40 percent kebab population, not over three quarters. This could be so good. Anyway, in all seriousness, this move that has placed the culturally far-left establishment in Sweden in a huge conundrum. Because, you see, the cultural far-left in Sweden, that is to say all political parties except for Sverige Demokraterna, are very keen on mass Islamic immigration, whilst at the same time being also very keen on harsh gay exhibitionism in the streets. And since all leftist ideals are equal in the disordered leftist mind, now they have to choose. Which trumps which? Being Muslim trumps being non-straight? Or is it the other way around? It seems that the former applies because the left was quick to shout racism at the idea and then organized the counter parade because it, quote, pits two oppressed groups against each other. Now that's very interesting because last time I checked, nobody but the Muslims threw non straights off the buildings or threw rocks at them in the parades. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a white cis scum lord. <laughs> You see, in Sweden, the LGBT lobby is paid for by the taxpayer, regardless of whether non-straight people themselves agree with its policies or whether most taxpayers in general agree with it. The institution called Riksförbundet för homosexuellas, bisexuellas och transpersoners Rätingheter, that is RFSL, announced that it distances itself from Pride Java because it promotes, quote, racism and white privilege. <laughs> These people are for real! Other folks accuse the initiator of pinkwashing, which is essentially a left-wing LGBTist word designated for everyone who doesn't regard non-straight issues through a far-left perspective. Even leftist atheist Richard Dawkins recognized that the reaction is utterly pathetic. These are interesting times indeed. The English language media, such as The Spectator, accused SD of pulling a cynical stunt to, quote, make gays defend their oppressors. But that couldn't be further from the truth. We shouldn't be surprised, though, because virtually everything the cathedral media writes in Swedish or English about Sverige Demokraterna is bound to be either misleading or usually a straight-out lie. Jan Schönesson, the initiator of the whole debacle, gives us an insight not only into his own thinking, but also an insight into the thinking of his opposition. So instead of relying on the slanderous bollocks that the media prints, let's read straight from the source. So, on the pinkwashing allegation, right from the man's blog. Long quote. The left quickly slandered my initiative with the allegation of so-called pinkwashing. This is a common allegation coming from the queer left and from those who until now have had a monopoly on LGBTQ issues and event organizing. An allegation usually thrown against other groups and individuals who sympathize with the main objective, namely greater tolerance, but who do not otherwise subscribe to the views of the left. Pinkwashing is therefore usually associated with right-wing extremism, conservatism, family values, and other things which the left dislikes and assumes that other within the LGBTQ community dislike as well. 
Pinkwashing opinions thus means bringing other perspectives that have not been accepted within the leading LGBT organizations in Sweden, such as the AFSL and AFSU, although the phenomenon can be noticed in other places too. For example, a, a homosexual sympathetic to heterosexual nuclear families as the norm, irrespective of his or her orientation, or one who chooses to be skeptical of some asylum seekers claiming sexual repression in their grounds for asylum, or one who is hesitant to the gay adoption political point, or one who is otherwise utterly unimpressed by both conventional politics and LGBTQ policies. He or she, or maybe hen, just wants his privacy and uh, be left alone and merely wants to feel respected if anyone wonders about his sex life and relationships. Such a person, though, will be automatically placed into the LGBT movement's context where he is expected and indeed assumed to dismiss the nuclear family, to be credulous of asylum seekers, and so on. Add to that the pop music and pop culture in general which encourages one to be sexually outspoken and aggressive towards opponents of LGBTQ questions, be politically correct in all matters, but especially on matters of racism and immigration, and distrust anyone who does not share the queer leftist worldview and other lifestyle choices and views such as militant vegetarianism or post-colonialism. Pinkwashing is thus a master suppression technique crafted to avoid having to deal with these questions. A good example of an openly gay person who endured accusations of pinkwashing is the American author Bruce Bauer. He moved to Holland with his Norwegian boyfriend around 2000, but was forced to leave the country when they were pursued by angry homophobic Muslims. Bauer complained of these threats and other abuse cases, but was told that he, as a conservative, could not do it without being accused of pinkwashing. Bauer and his boyfriend moved to Norway where they could live reasonably free, but still be vulnerable, <coughs> sorry, vulnerable to veiled threats from Muslims. One could say that Bauer is an Islamocritic of large dimensions, but the situations he wrote about did not occur when he was a public figure, but earlier. Another example from the Netherlands is Gert Wilders, who is forced to live under death threats from Muslims and on LGBTQ issues is as open as the Dutchmen usually are. His compatriot and prede predecessor, Pim Fortuyn, was both gay and Islamocritic, and for that he was murdered in 2001. Many apolitical, or at least non-socialist, Islamocritical commentators such as Douglas Murray or Ishad Manahi are openly gay or, like late Christopher Hitchens, tolerant of all sexual orientations, but intolerant with repressive Islam and with the far left's worldview, which holds the monopoly on LGBTQ issues. To accuse me of pinkwashing, as AFSL's president did on SVT on July 20th, is therefore entirely in line with the plan from those who feel threatened. They do not want other perspectives to be brought in. They want to retain their monopolistic privilege and any financial contributions that they receive, and they want to pass epithets like racist, homophobic, and Islamophobic at me and at the other non-socialist supporters of sexual freedom and tolerance. It is low and vile, but unfortunately it's very common to resort to such methods. They also disseminate a lot of hate, like they did on the Straight Hate Day in 2010. The bitter rage that I brought to myself from RFSL and LGBT establishment comes because some of them are starting to be ashamed. Luckily, there are other camps within the LGBT community who do not share RFSL's and queer left's hatred of dissident sympathizers. The article is very long and goes into the minutiae of how the cultural left works, but I wanted to bring you at least this part because it's exactly the part that got no coverage at all in the cathedral media. I mean, seriously, the analysis material available on the internet in English on this issue, except for Breibart's small coverage, is as far from reality as it can get. After reading this, it is thus clear, at least to me, that the organizer knows his enemies damn well, even better than the leftist supporters know their side themselves. The heads of the establishment are also fully aware that Jan is not your average low-rank right-wing prick, but a man who knows his game damn well and knows his opposition's game too. Because of this, the cathedral media has went into radio silence. Very little has been said in the media in the last three or four days. The newest thing I found was from Fria Tidde, a right-wing publication, which reported on right Richard Dawkins' reaction. But otherwise, silence. Which is unusual for the Swedish media when it comes to gay pride events. They usually talk a lot about it. But not this time. How strange. <laughs> 
Anyway, I genuinely hope that the parade actually does take place and they won't be intimidated by the left or by Islamic violence. And if time allows me, I'll perhaps make a video after the event too, using on-the-ground reporting, which is the kind of reporting that is bound to never hit the mainstream media. I just know they won't report it. You know, I read the Swedish media quite regularly and that kind of makes me quite sure that the media will try to ignore as much as possible. Oh, one more thing. Sweden is seeing a surge in bombings and grenade attacks by youths and diverse people, particularly in Malmö. Just last Friday there was the third such attack in a week. Police say it's related to a dispute between two gangs of youths in the diversity-loving area of Rosengård. It seems that the youths now carry their disputes with bombs in the streets. Hey, don't look at me. The media says youths. I just reported. <laughs> just had to throw that in there. Okay, uh, you have the links in the low bar if you want to read more about these things. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Freedom Alternat, and consider supporting this channel. Come on, I know you want it. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.